It's The Real Deal and today we're going to discuss three charts that show this isn't a housing bubble. With home prices continuing to deliver double digit increases, some are concerned we're in a housing bubble like the one in 2006. However, a closer look at this market data indicates this is nothing like 2006 for three major reasons. The housing market isn't driven by risky mortgages and loans. Back in 2006, nearly everyone could qualify for a loan. The MCAI more than doubled from 2004, 378, to 2006, 869. Today, the index stands at 130. As an example of this difference between today and 2006, let's look at the volume of mortgages that originated when a buyer had less than a 620 credit score. Dr. Frank Nothaft, chief economist for CoreLogic, reiterates this point. Quote, there are marked differences in today's run-up in prices compared to 2005, which was a bubble fueled by risky loans and lenient underwriting. Today, loans with high risk features are absent and mortgage underwriting is prudent. Homeowners aren't using their homes as ATMs this time. During the housing bubble, as prices skyrocketed, people were refinancing their homes and pulling large sums of cash. As prices began to fall, that caused many to spiral into negative equity situations. Their mortgage was higher than the value of their home. Today, homeowners are letting their equity build. Tappable equity is the amount available for homeowners to access before hitting the maximum 80% combined loan to value ratio, thus still leaving them with at least 20% equity. In 2006, that number was 4.6 billion. Today, that number stands at over 8 billion. Yet the percentage of cash out refinances where homeowners take out at least 5% more than their original mortgage amount is half of what it was in 2006. In short, today, people have learned. They are not using their home as an ATM to go buy a depreciating asset, such as a boat, jet ski, or car. This time, it's simply a matter of supply and demand. FOMO dominated the housing market leading up to the 2006 housing bubble and drove up buyer demand. Back then, housing supply more than kept up as many homeowners put their houses on the market, as evidenced by the over seven month supply of existing housing inventory available for sale in 2006. Today, that number is barely two months and in Sarasota County alone, we are just at seven weeks. Builders also overbuilt during the bubble, but pulled back significantly over the next decade. Sam Kader, VP and Chief Economist, Economic and Housing Research at Freddie Mac explains that pullback is the major factor of the lack of inventory available today. Quote, the main driver of the housing shortfall has been the long-term decline in the construction of single-family homes. Here's a chart that quantifies Cater's remarks today. There are simply not enough homes to keep up with the current demand. Let's get to the bottom line, ladies and gents. This market is nothing like the run-up to 2006. Bill McBride, the author of the prestigious Calculated Risk blog, predicted the latest housing bubble and crash. This is what he had to say about today's housing market. Quote, it's not clear at all to me that things are going to slow down significantly in the near future. In 2005, I had a strong sense that the hot market would turn and that when it turned, things would get very ugly. Today, I don't have that sense at all because all of the fundamentals are there. Demand will be high, for a while because millennials need houses. Prices will keep rising for a while because inventory is so low. I hope that answers all your questions and doubts on today's housing market. As always, please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. It'll mean the world to me. We'll see you next week.